Joe, this isn't your last one. No, no, it's not. No. Here's what producer Joe thinks. Producer Joe. What producer Joe thinks. Free beer, hot wings, Zane, Steve, and listeners. I hope this all works out. There was a lot going on in this movie and a lot to write down this morning. Mm -hmm. Old movies, generally speaking, suck. But there are a few that managed to break through. Rosemary's Baby, A Clockwork Orange, and Burt Reynolds' Masterpiece Deliverance. Those all stand the test of time. So how would 1977 Smokey and the Bandit fare being watched for the first time in 2015? Well, not good, frankly. The film kicks off with a nine-minute montage of semis traveling to the sounds of Jerry Reed's The Legend. I suspected at this moment that this movie was something <laughs> knuckle-dragging hillbillies would love. My su- <laughs> Sorry. No, it's My- true. <laughs> My suspicions were confirmed when the montage of trucks faded to a shot of more trucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's at this point we meet the film's protagonist, played by Burt Reynolds, Bo Darville, or The Bandit. Bo, a gypsy of sorts, well known as a man who can drive trucks good, I think, <laughs> is, a, <laughs> is approached by wealthy Texan Big Enos and his pygmy son Little. These two stereotypes hire Bo to bootleg 400 cases of Coors through Texas for $80,000. What the hell? That seems like, that seems like a lot of money. That seems ridiculous, man. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, the plot is revealed. As well as the first true joke in the film, Big Enos, or Enos, pointing at Bandit's truck proclaims, any fool who would paint his truck like this would show up at a minister's funeral dressed in feathers. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and it reaps no laughs. laughs. Bandit, knowing he couldn't do it alone, brings his lover Cletus Snow into the mix. <laughs> Snow, played by Reed, would drive the truck, and Bandit, in that iconic Trans Am, would act as the blocker, someone to detract police for, uh, from the bootlegging truck. Though there is a gag or goof literally every 20 seconds, I couldn't find this movie less funny. The setup alone takes forever, so I'm relieved when a nonsensical police chase montage is used in place of actual plot lines or story. <laughs> I'm then confused how a movie with two big montages so early can go virtually nowhere. Fast forward to a slapsticky disaster of a scene at the Coors factory, and they're headed back home with the goods. It's hard for me to see how they plan on stretching this another hour, but I'm staring angrily at the load bar, so I know they will. <laughs> While a man with a mustache and a 77 Trans Am would today be a total rape factory, in 77, it was perfectly fine for a woman to just jump in a car and tell him to hit it. And with that, Sally Field is introduced as a, a runaway bride who just ditched her fiancé, a Texas sheriff's son. Now, you would think that the bandit driving like an absolute maniac would be enough to spur the chase scene that would waste the next hour of my life. Nope. I guess they need a personal touch. I applaud them for adding a layer to this already complicated plot. <laughs> Ominous music plays as we're introduced to Jackie Gleason playing the bumbling, racist, wife-beating Sheriff Buford T. Justice and his man-boy son who calls Gleason daddy in a very sexual way throughout the film. <laughs> You must have liked it. It all part. ties in. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Justice, right off the bat, lends himself to one of the more bizarre moments when he questions a group of young boys on the whereabouts of fields, then warns them not to touch themselves. What? I understand this joke even less than the others. Why did he assume these kids were planning to beat off in the middle of a road in broad daylight? Was this a joke? Was this an anti-masturbation PSA? It's not funny, so I have to assume that there'd been a ta Texas peen-whacking epidemic. With that, the chase is on, and it goes on and on and on until Smokey... <laughs> And the bandit looks a lot like your smartphone screen, and you only look up to keep from falling asleep. <laughs> there are locks in. 
<laughs> there are lots of wacky misfortunes. <laughs> More insanely hilarious jokes than I could handle. A little racism, not as much as I would have thought, honestly. And some threats of spousal abuse, again, not as much as I would have thought. They finally make it back to the big truck party to deliver the beer. And then the chase continues. I will say this. Despite being one of the longest turds ever made... Reynolds and Fields are actually great actors considering what they're given. So there's that. I'm Joe, and this movie gets zero out of five bandit jackets. <laughs> That's your new opinion from producer Joe. More of the Free Beer and Hot Wing Show is next.